Well, let's talk to Peter Fortune, first of all, uh, Conservative MP for Bromley and Biggin Hill. Peter, very good morning to you. Um, Keir Starmer mate. doesn't answer the question. He then waffles on about how he's reported it all in due course and everything's fine. As long as you report it, he's going to continue to take these freebies. I mean, it's extraordinary um, how Keir Starmer, the man who was going to supposedly bring transparency and integrity back to Downing Street, has gone, isn't it? Well, I think you're right. Um, and this is another in the litany of disasters we've seen in this new Labour government over the first, what, 10 weeks? Not very long at all, and they're already making no. huge mistakes. And I think what's interesting about this, and you, you, you hit the nail on the head earlier, is I think there's two points. One is the hypocrisy. There's a lot of people sitting on that Labour front bench who have spent years screaming into TV cameras like this, complaining about the behaviour of Conservative politicians. Mm. And it hasn't taken very long for that mark to fall and to find out that uh, they are as bad as they've always accused others of being. And that hypocrisy is what I think really winds people up. But also, Sorry, you, you put this alongside the winter fuel payments. Yeah. So you look at those really important payments that are going to some of the poorest in society. And what you've got is hypocrisy and you've got a, a, a selfishness, a misunderstanding of the support that people need. And I think that's really starting to grate. And I think that's why, for us as a Conservative Party, that's why I think it's really important we get our new leader in place really, really quickly, because I think we need to take it to these people, because they're causing some real damage to the country. Yeah, I think so. I mean, Neil has written uh, this uh, text to me today. Starmer is stating that he will continue to take clothing gifts from Lord Ali. All this goes to show is the absolute arrogance of the man. And it does seem as though there's an arrogance to what uh, the Starmers are doing. I mean, yesterday, um, as Dan Hodges, who's generally a supporter of the Labour Party, said, you know, the idea that uh, Downing Street's answer to all the criticism of of Lady Starmer was to send her off to a fashion show uh, wearing a dress that she had been loaned, which was worth several thousand pounds, in a time when people have been told they have to tighten their belts, at a time when pensions are having money taken away from them, when we're being told things are going to get worse before they get better. Well, apparently not for the Starmers. Well, no, then. I think people are being told to tighten belts that they've bought themselves. There we are. And nobody else would be expecting... I made that, made that point yesterday. <laughs> right. Uh, and, and so, again, it's that, it's that hypocrisy. I mean, I've been on the show before. You know I don't like ad hominem attacks. What I like to do is look at what people say and what they do. Mm. And what Keir Starmer and the Labour Party have said and the hypocrisy and the accusations they've thrown around in the past flies in the face of their behaviour very, very early, early on in their term. And again, that's why I, I want to come back to saying that, you know, we as a Conservative Party, we need to we need to get our leader in place really, really quickly because there's a big political open goal here and, uh, and we don't have a striker. And what about their move in uh, Italy yesterday as well? See, Keith Starmer spent a great deal of time in the last parliament talking about how Rwanda was a bad idea, how about mm. outsourcing uh, our immigration problem to a third country uh, was inhumane and pro probably ill thought out. Uh, he's now thinking of not only outsourcing to a third country, but outsourcing to a third country who's also outsourcing to a fourth country. Well, again, isn't there a, that theme of hypocrisy rolls through this as well so james cleverly who, who i'm supporting for the leadership when he was in role in in that office one of the things he put in place and, and, and really started to push was that rwanda scheme to act as a deterrent for people crossing the channel right that was part of a bigger structure of what um, he was putting in place why because if you have illegal immigrants coming from afghanistan if you have illegal immigrants coming from australia uh, it's not Australia, rather, uh, uh, Syria yeah. or um, uh, uh, Iran, you cannot return them to those countries. So you need to find somewhere to uh, put them safely whilst they could be processed. And that was the conclusion that he came to, and the Labour Party attacked that. And what we find now is they're trying to put something, they're trying to put a very similar scheme in place because they realise that that's what's needed to stop that illegal immigration. So again, you see this hypocrisy where they attacked the ideas and the policies that we were putting in place under James as Home Secretary. When you find that now they're in government and they have to do the real work, they don't have any answers. They're just trying to copy ours. Yeah, it's a kind of bare-faced cheek approach that they've got. Peter, thanks very much indeed. Peter Fortune, uh, MP for Bromley and Biggin Hill for the Conservative Party.